This is your host, Bill Conrad, with Jonathan Didmore, and welcome to WP Tonic, Episode 7. Today, we're going to blend in social media, WordPress, and the real estate industry to see how they all intertwine and how applications in WordPress and social media can be used with the real estate profession. Also, just a note, Jonathan has MailRite, which is a program he's developing for the real estate industry. So without further ado, let's get right into the conversation. Welcome to WP Tonic, and this is Bill Conrad, Jonathan Dinmore. You missed all, if you want to see the excitement, watch us goof around with uh, Google Plus Hangouts today. I invited people in. I didn't know we were actually live, and it's crazy. So this is going to be a short show today because we have to be out of here because we screwed around so long. We got a new camera, a 930 C for the backside and screwed around with that. But that's the process. So today we're talking about social credibility and real estate and websites. Jonathan, that's how we're starting. So I'll let you go in and talk a bit. And then I'll talk about the challenges we have on getting the new office set up in Reno, Nevada, building that social credibility. We have the social credibility in Modesto. Building it here is another thing. Go ahead. Yeah, I I thought we're going to do maybe every month do a special about the real estate um, industry and how you can utilize websites and online marketing because um, Bill's um, Bill's got a lot of experience him and his wife have run um, and still do run an independent office they're looking um, to establish a new office in the northern Nevada area um, I run a separate company that provides services to the real estate industry to help them with their online marketing so i think both of us and i've done quite a few um, websites developed and designed websites for real estate professionals so i think we between us we uh, we offer a lot of insight and value to um, the real estate industry um, so, but I also think some of the key subjects that we're going to discuss apply to other Pacific industries. So, if you're not a real estate professional, I think you still get value from this. Um, the real estate professional um, has to do a lot of marketing to keep um, the supply of um, people that are looking either to buy or sell houses t- to utilize them, their services. So, um, and the online part of this has just increasingly become important. Um, One fact is there's a number of studies that have shown that almost 96% 96 of people that approach a real estate agent have been looking online for months before they approach that specific agent. They're basically looking at a number of agents online And then they make their judgment call about which agent, which office they're going to approach. So I think a lot of people in the real estate industry don't realise that. And it's in a way, it's quite threatening that you're being pre-judged, pre-qualified in a way, before they even pick up the phone to talk to you. And I think if you really understand that you realise your online activities are much more important than even most agents even realise. What do you think, Bill? You know, I'm not sure, to tell the truth, because the traditional way, we built the office in Modesto, California over 20 years. My wife has a group of clients who are so loyal, they have the, the, the families, the kids, it's referral, it's by word of mouth. It still has that very, like politics, belly to belly, that relationship building. Now, I do believe that the online helps, but I don't think it helps as much as we might think. Now, that said, I think younger people under 30, before they buy a house or if they don't have any relationships or they move to a new city, Americans move a lot, they don't know anybody in those cities, they do go online, they do look for agents. The secondary way is referrals. We still do a lot of referrals. Our people come to us, our friends, our neighbors, our families come to us and they ask us, who do you know in Kansas City or Washington, D.C.? who's really good at real estate. And since my wife is CRS, the highest level broker, she can go in and look at the credentials and the credibility of the agents in that town and select two agents for them to go talk to. Now that's the old fashioned way. You still need the social credibility. You need the online presence. 
because without social credibility, you lose a whole market. So I don't think, and I've done a lot of research and a lot of study, it's still a relationship business. Social media helps, you have to have some, but it doesn't have to be overboard. That said though, I do believe there's some other ways that you can use that social media to break open, and things are changing. I think, I don't think I really made myself that clear. I, I totally agree with everything you've just said, Bill, which is quite unusual for us. Um, <laughs> oh, everyone but, missed um, earlier. But um, what I think I, I didn't make clear is that I don't see it as an all or nothing. I You do everything online, and you and what the things you've stated I totally discredit. Um, and on the other hand, I speak to some agents that have a very traditional um, book of business and book of relationships, a sphere of relationship, as I call it. Um, and they say, I don't have to bother with online. And I think I don't agree with that. Either. No, you have to have some online presence. I, I see it as a balance. I see that your traditional building relationships on the ground and reinforcing those relationships by what you do online and also attracting new people by what you do online so they get to know you and then when you meet them face to face, um, that relationship has been built up has been you can build a, a relationship with those people quicker so I don't see it as a as a all or nothing I see the really effective intelligent the really movers in the industry they have combined both and they fully understand how to combine right both. right there are a lot of high-end agents who have transitioned over there's a few haven't because they have such this old-fashioned, deep relationship with hundreds of people in their town. It only takes a few hundred people to, have to make a lot of money in real estate. That's a close relationship where they're referring you, where they're helping you. That said, the super agents definitely are tying in a new media of all sorts. Now, let me talk about social credibility in the website. So how, and I'm going to ask you, Jonathan, a person has a lot of written referrals and letters about how good a job they did, you know, selling the house, and they, they've referred multi-generations and family. How would you translate, translate that social credibility, that relationship, onto the website? How could you push that information out to the broad base? I think you, it's really very important, but I think you've got to link the testimonials and the styles of testimonials to the key worries and problems that you're helping your clientele deal with. And hopefully that that made sense. You know, if you, if you just got very long-winded general de testimonials, but if you've got like two to three sentences from somebody saying, and it expresses the problem, and that problem is what a lot, uh, a large segment of your target audience has a similar problem, and they say, well, they dealt, this agent helped me deal with this, and they're great, blah, blah, blah. That I think that's fantastic, and you need your testimonials everywhere. And the truth of the matter is it does, it's a lot more work, and, it's a, and it can be expensive, is if you've got video testimonials, um, a video testimonial is, in the industry is known to be 100% more powerful than a written testimonial. So, but it takes a lot of work, you know, to, you know, to get somebody in, to film them, to sort out the sound. That's why if you're already taking videos that you've sorted out your sound and you've got a local person that can edit for you and you're already producing those videos yourself, it's much easier then to bring somebody in or to do it on off-site and to take these testimonials. So I'm just giving a broad landscape about that. I totally agree with you again, Bill, that testimonials are really, really very important. Yep, I would say today the most important element is a testimonial and then how you get that testimonial out to people. And that's the core of social media. Not social media, but social credibility. 
However you do it, yeah. it's got to get out there. So if you do great service to somebody and there's no testimonial or backup of their service, you'll get maybe that family. But to build on that even further, you can take that testimonial somehow, get it out on the website, get it out on video, whatever it takes. One thing you said that I think that I have a different opinion on is the ability to produce a testimonial now with the smartphone is amazing. This still does an excellent picture. Even a selfie or something or a quick setup would work of a testimonial. I saw Glenn Fitchard, who I work with on Timelines of Success. He does the weekend rap. He's an extraordinarily accept, credible executive, but he makes a lot of money in the corporate world, been extremely successful. He's from South Africa. He did a, a video this week on his iPhone that is absolutely amazing. Now, he's transitioning. He's actually trying to get his, he's starting his own business. I better watch how much I say because he's a fairly high level executive because he wants to get out of the pressure of this high level corporation. So that's a whole different story. But the bottom line is he took a camera like this and just got it done. It's amazing. And he puts it up. He calls it his weekly walk and he does a walk. So anyway, that said, there's got to be a way to tie this in. And that's what we're looking at. I think, like, again, I think you're totally right. But I think it's a mixture. I think some of it you can do yourself, some of it. Um, I think a lot of people, it's all right trying stuff at the beginning, but there's only so many hours in the day. Um, and agents mm -hmm, are busy, pe busy, yeah. busy people. And um, if you can get the editing, the editing normally is very time-consuming. And um, you can do a, a basic 30-second, 40-second video, but I'm talking about where you, the production values, you want something a little, you want titles, you want cuts, um, you want something, um, people try and do that themselves. But I think, you know, it's just better to hire somebody at $20 that can do the job. And but you then you do need then to start planning. You need a scheduled day where you're going to take these videos. But I think I think there's plenty of like I say, there's plenty of resources online that will tell you how yeah. to do this. You know, I my wife is big time broker, twenty year twenty nineteen ninety CRS, licensed in two different states. And you just said something just like wrung out. I, I say, Karen, like why aren't you getting new high end quality? pictures from professional photographers, you know, for instead of her old pictures or her quick picture. Agents forget they have to take time out to get the right staging, the right look and all that. They, they do that. They just, it's hard to explain. You just hit on something. But on the other side, you remind me of something else. Real estate has gone into a team concept. I sort of, when I shut down my construction company after 9-11, helped my wife out. We did really well when she was out front doing real estate, and I was putting together all the packages, all the marketing, helping her with the backside of her real estate brokerage, which had anywhere from eight to 12 agents, about five top producers. It was a good top producer office. I was doing all the backside and letting her just go out and what she does better and is meeting people, putting contracts together, not doing anything else, scanning, having everything just ready to go because she was out front talking, meeting, and working with people. So a team, let's say you had a team, you had one person marketing, doing all that stuff behind, learning how to do the video, running the website, and then one person out front with the people. That's a two-person team. That's another possibility. Now, if you don't want a two-person team, maybe you could hire somebody, like you just said, to do all that other work. I think I, I think there's a kind of... I, I totally agree with you again. This is amazing. Yeah, we're throwing but, stuff. Um, we, we, is, I, I, I never know this ever to happen before. But um, um, And I totally embarrassed us by... The Google Hangout hooking on to people, hey. <laughs> um, live, could, live. Yeah. Um, but I think there's a hybrid way of doing what you've just said. You know, you have a you hire a video editor and you can have a local um, a, a local person that works for, you know, that's kind of semi virtual assistant, but they they live in your local area, so you can meet them, you know. Um, and there's lots of people that got a part-time job, but they also want some more income. And, you know, I know some people in the web design development that got a virtual assistant, but they're based in their city. And they pay them a bit more. You know, I think where a lot of people go wrong is they look for a decent virtual assistant and they look for it for pennies. 
for a very low hourly rate. And I think you need somebody of quality that can do your do the job without you ending up having to supervise everything they're doing. Yep. And you're bet you should be more generous on the hourly rate and find somebody that that you don't that you can trust, you can build a relationship that's local and they can do I think an agent really an agent instinctively knows this, that they don't want to do this stuff. They want to be out talking to people. And they're right to feel that because that's how they're going to build up their relationships and get listings. And that's how they're going to make a good living. No, I agree with everything you said. And we need to check on some things. You know, we didn't even talk about how you could use a virtual assistant in real estate. There is a company out there. I was listening to uh, Super Agents Live, Tony Salgado, and he is promoting and developing a virtual agent relationship with real estate. I'm not sure how that works, what the virtual agent can actually do for the real estate agent. They can make phone calls. There's I mean, limits. They've got to be licensed within the state. There's some other rules that you have to deal yeah, with. I, don't, I, think, I, I think, you know, the email dripping, yep. all, all the donkey work, as I call. The all donkey the, work. This is interesting. Um, all the, hey, stuff, all the, st- all the stuff that sucks the time of a busy agent, you know, um, well, you know organising your calendar, booking out times for the videos, um, making sure mailings are sent out. I still believe in judicial mailings and I'm, I'm in email marketing. I don't dismiss anything. I think... Uh, uh, a agent that wants to get results in 2014 has to look at everything and has to keep records about the return on investment they're getting from that marketing that they're doing. But I, I, I think you've got to look at everything. And I think depending on the area you live, how long you've been established there, I think it will vary. I, I think how much online activity you've got to do if you're very, very well established and still very active. Jonathan, we have to cut the show yeah. short today. Udemy is going to come in, take the studio over. But that said, I'm going to do a recap of some of this information. There's so much information that we talked about. We didn't go into depth. But we can break them into four different areas and talk about those in future shows. And this applies not only to real estate, but to other industries too, in different aspects. So this will be a good, this will be an okay show. Quick. Well, can we just, well. Go ahead, finish up. I, I can go on, f- unless somebody needs no, a room no, now. No, we need to cut it back. Last time we went too long. Well, Short can we go another 10, another 10 minutes? You know, real fast. But, yeah, real yeah. fast, let's talk about WordPress. How could, I mean, we didn't really talk about WordPress today. Five more minutes, Jonathan. Tell us how we use WordPress in context with social media and the things that we well, I think I think you got. To, I think the agents got to understand. I do think WordPress is one of the more suitable platforms for the real estate professional if they're looking for a website. Um, and I think a website. I think there's a number of choices for the real estate professional when it comes to WordPress. Um, there's a number of WordPress what I call fully hosted solutions. And what I mean by that is you go to the website, you pay a monthly fee and you select one of their themes and it's hosted by the company. They might have libraries of content, images, pre-constructed text um, and a number of other inbuilt plugins um, that is available and you pay a monthly fee. And one of the most important plugins is that most people that will be coming to your website wants, wants to see what properties are available in your area. And they get that from um, what is called the MLS listings, which are normally controlled by the regional real estate associations in your area. And they utilize another technology called IDX to display this information on websites. And your fully hosted WordPress hosted website 
um, they normally offer a plug-in that will um, show this information on your website. And it, it has a high degree of attraction um, because you pay your monthly fee, you get it all set up. Um, they normally look um, and that's it. But that that's it is one of the problems because the people that tend to want this type of solution really allow their websites, in my experience, to die a bit. And that that's the problem because you can't, you really, as an agent, got to find a balance where you're hiring people to do so much of this for you, but you don't get into the misleading idea that you can't, you won't have to be actively also involved in your website. Yeah, Jonathan, I, I appreciate that. We tied that into the WordPress. You just remind me, I need to go out to the local board because you know I'm having challenges with my site, but we do need to get out of here because of the next group coming. Yeah, right. Great. Aloha. Sounds good, Jonathan.